Welcome to the Honest Channel. I'm Claire Johnston, a journalist on a mission to learn how to age well, look and feel better for longer and share what I learn with you. And a couple of weeks ago, I talked to 55-year-old esthetician Lee Medeiros, who transformed the sagging skin on her neck, taking it from turkey to toned by following a simple massage technique in which she buffed either side of her neck with a wet towel for three minutes a day. And a lot of viewers have told me about the benefits of massage and exercise for the face too that they've experienced. And so today I'm talking to facial massage expert Claire McLean, a fellow Scot who having used a mix of exercises and massage to lift her own face, now helps others do the same through online and in-person teaching. Teaching. And today she's going to share some of the most effective techniques for face and neck toning and even give ourselves a bit of an eye and brow lift too. And the best part is it takes just 10 minutes and it's totally free. So sit back and get ready to learn with Claire and a reminder that you'll also find more advice around how to age well on my website honest.scott. Claire, thank you for joining me. I, I, you're a name twin of mine, basically, because your name is spelt the same without the I. I know, and it never ever happens because nobody's ever spelt the same. So we're spelt, we're spelt the good way. And also great to have a fellow Scott on as well. It was really interesting timing actually when you got in touch because quite a few viewers over the years have said to me, you should look at face massage. And it's one of these things that's been on my list, but I think probably at the back of my mind, I was a bit like, well, how much difference? could that really make? And then I shared a video with you based around a viewer's experience with her incredible results from using a neck massage technique with just a rolled up towel that she was doing at home. It's completely free and she'd got brilliant results uh, with it. And um, it made me sit up and take a bit more notice actually. And I thought, well, this is a perfect opportunity to talk about facial massage and the benefits of it more widely. How big a difference aesthetically you think facial and neck massage could actually make? So it was interesting because I watched um, that video as well. And I think there's so many obviously treatments that you can go to. And, and obviously we know Botox and fillers is, is such a massive um, trend right now. But actually, what none of that stuff does is actually really stimulate the collagen and the um, and stimulate the muscle, which is kind of the only thing that you can get with face massage. Have you have you tried face massage yourself? Have you have you done a few things? I use on and off for years something like this, which is just a roller and it has a little current. But when I, I st sort of stopped using it, went onto another microcurrent device recently, and then I've gone back onto this when I saw that neck massage, because what something like this does is it, you know, you get the pink, you get the flushing, you get a little bit of it. So yeah, I've been, you can imagine, I've been all over with this in recent days. Again, similarity in terms of journey, I was heading towards the big five O, and I was thinking, right, okay, what is there that's out there that's maybe a more holistic approach to aging well, but aging with confidence. And not just about looking good, but feeling good. So very much I wanted to look and find something that I could treat inside out. Mm -hmm. And I suppose that's the thing, you know, friends, everybody was, you know, going down that um, injectable routes, which is absolutely fine. I'm, I'm not against that, but I just wasn't for me. I wanted to find something that I suppose created a little bit of a practice day to day for me as well, that kind of, was that self-care practice. It gave me that that time for myself. And I discovered um, face massage and gua sha and face yoga as I was coming out of lockdown. So uh, it was a, a few years ago. And I think the million Zoom meetings, Teams meetings, you became so critical of like what your what your face looked it's like. It's so true point, that. Isn't it? You, yeah. know, you find that you start to look at yourself and not look at the other person. And I was thinking, I'm getting older. You know, I've always taken care of my body in terms of going to the gym. Actually, why do I not work the muscles in my face? And I kind of just had that moment of, I need to find out more about it. So I think through face massage, you are boosting that circulation. So you are really getting a circulation from that basal layer, from the bottom layer, that oxygenated blood, which brings all those new skin cells mm -hmm. up to the surface. So naturally, you're going to feel lovely and glowy and see a difference in terms of complexion. Also, while you're doing massage, you are also stimulating lymphatic massage. And I think that's something that probably gets forgotten about when we look to go to other treatments um, that are maybe a little bit more invasive. 
So any of my sessions that I do, I always start with incorporating a lymphatic massage and you can stimulate the lymphatic system without doing it yourself. So you need to do it. It doesn't have its own pump. So if you think about your stimulating through the massage and um, your lymphatic system to rid of toxins and get rid of all that puffiness, you are boosting that circulation so you get that lovely glow. You're oxygenating the skin. So like you said, it's that lovely flushing that you get with it. So I like the facial massage to get everything moving and to get that glow. But I like using the gua sha to really use the stone and to sculpt the skin and to really work with draining those fluids out the face. And then the other part is the exercise. So how do you actually exercise the 40 plus muscles in the face as well? So over time, um, you definitely um, start to see with consistency that more defined uh, sculpt look in terms of the face and the muscles as well. But I always think with the face, it is the window of what's going on inside the body. You know, you know whether, you know, it's hormonal or, you know, you've been eating a load of rubbish or you've not been hydrating. It shows in the face first as well. So you can really kind of unblock any kind of stagnation, any kind of um I suppose anything that's going on within the body before it starts to manifest into the face as well. Can, do you mind me asking your age, Claire, now? Yeah, sure. I'm 48, heading towards a big 5-0. Kind of felt a bit significant and I thought, OK, what what can you do to kind of age well, but also um, age healthily too? So how long have you been doing face massage on yourself? So I've been doing it now a couple of years. How quickly would you say that you started to see significant changes to your skin in terms of, you know, lifting, toning? I would say probably about one month in, I was out for dinner with uh, my husband and my brother-in-law. And let's face it, guys, do not notice things to do with skin or anything <laughs> along those lines. And uh, we were out for dinner and my brother-in-law said to me, you're looking like really well like have you been doing something like your skin and everything looks really like like fresh and and it basically obviously winding me up going you know have you been you know have you been going down the injectable route are you getting botox something we should know about and my husband was the same he's like you know i actually noticed that as well so i thought right okay if they notice it it must be working because i think with massage and gua sha you can see quite instant results and also from drain and kind of excess fluid from the face what I would say was face yoga and working the muscle and kind of folding that muscle under tension, that definitely takes a bit longer because it's consistency. It's like you don't go to yoga and you can start to, you know, do all the moves straight away. It takes time. So I'd say probably over about six months, I started to see face getting slimmer and more contoured. Uh, and then I'd probably say from a year on, I started to see cheeks being more defined uh, jawline being more defined from that as well and as I said they all kind of work together they all kind of complement each other so you're kind of giving yourself a full kind of range of rituals and techniques to do. So you're doing an element of face massage and then you're you're exercising your face through face yoga how long are you spending on that each day? Presumably it's daily, is it? Yes, it's daily. Yeah. Yeah. When I started, it, I felt overwhelmed by the choice that was out there um, and didn't know where to go and what to do. And you just kind of end up not doing anything. I also wanted something that I could fit into my day um, easily. So I started off simply with 10 minutes a day. Um, mm -hmm. And that was literally starting. I first started with gua sha. So just starting with just using the gua sha to get things moving um, and to start really kind of working with the face and the neck. I then went in to find out more about facial massage, um, a little bit of reflexology and then into face yoga as well. So I kind of found out about them once people get to ask me about, you know, what I'd been doing, etc. And that's when I wanted to go and get trained so I could offer the right advice. And it wasn't just something that I discovered. Ten minutes a day to start, you will start to see a difference in terms of your complexion and your skin. You'll start to feel less puffy and you can fit that in in the morning if you tend to feel that you're a little bit more puffy in the morning and you've got that time. Or actually, it's a really nice practice at night to do because it's really soothing, you know. Mm. Just, and what I find is I do a quick 10 minute face massage gua sha in the morning. And then at night time, when I've got a little bit more time after I've had my bath, I kind of do a little bit of face yoga as well. So probably all in all about 20 um, minutes a day. But even with 10 minutes a day, you will see a difference and you will feel a difference as well. Could you demonstrate from, for us then some of the best massage and, and yoga movements that you feel would benefit people for um, facelifting? 
That's what, what we all want. <laughs> that's, the, that's the crucial one, the face lifting. So I thought following on from the video about the the jaw and the neck, maybe just to show a little bit that we can you can do with that as well that doesn't involve the, the towel or you could use that as well. As I said, I've not tried that yet. I'm intrigued. It, it is intriguing. Whenever I do anything along the jaw, I always start with like kind of manipulating the fascia for fascia release because what the whole the whole point of everything when we do um, face massage, etc., is about that free flow of energy, circulation, lymph, blood, etc., through the body. Um, now explain what the fascia is because we hear it a lot. It's great to get an explanation. So the fascia, this web-like uh, substance that goes through the body actually not only holds the structure, but it interlinks and touches every single cell, every vessel, everything, every organ throughout the body. And what they've discovered is it's a sensory organ. So it is um, to touch, to feel almost a little bit like intuition. So they say that, you know, when you feel that gut, that feeling in your gut, you know, if something's not right, they talk about that being fashion, how that sends the signals to the brain, etc., and makes you react the way that you do or think things that you think. So really healthy fascia um, is like hydrated, lubricant. So if you think of it like a web and they kind of crisscross in different ways throughout the body, the when fascia is lovely, plump and healthy, it just, it moves and glides and glides and moves with the body. Over time, through stress and tension, so we clench, we're tight, fascia becomes really tight and it actually starts to weld together. And then that stops everything moving through. So like I think it's that free flow through. So it's really, really interesting. And I've kind of got more into that since I started working on the face. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, you know, when you wake up in the morning, um, for example, if a cat gets up in the morning and they stretch and they, you know, they move, etc. An animal will always stretch when they get up or move. Yeah. As humans, when we wake up in the body, you know, we can just feel that tightness. It takes you a little while to get going. That's because overnight the fascia fuses, it gets a little bit fuzzy. So it's about stretching and moving it, manipulating it to let everything start to flow. So at the very least, we want to be making sure that we're, we're stretching our necks. Yes. You know, and and, um, and and getting things moving, as you say. If we think about, so we think about the jaw and or we think around this area and, and ultimately, unfortunately, you know, it doesn't just, it's not just around the jaw muscles. Actually, it's to do with every part of the face. The cheeks are actually super important because the zygomatic muscles here, when we, you know, in, in our brain, they're, they're, um, they're plump, they're, you know, they're plumped up. They're like, you know, little pillows. And over time, they kind of lose their stuffing. And actually what happens is the cheeks then pull down the eye. So you start to see the hollows here. And then that then creates a nasolabial fold and then it creates into the jawline as well. But also the opposite of that, the neck's really important because this muscle here, so you can see it coming down here, this muscle when it's tight and contract, it will contract. So it stops in terms of that lovely length that we get here. So when it contracts, it's pulling gravitational force of everything down as well. So by stretching and massaging here, you're then helping lift here. By working along the jaw, which I'll show you some moves on, um, along here, you're starting to move the fluid and then there's a little face yoga move we can do, which again, really works that little turkey neck that you can do without kind of slapping yourself with the toe. <laughs> I'm actually excited about this. Okay, um, show, go ahead and show us. And I, I'm just particularly excited to be sharing something that is free for viewers because I've done so many devices and I have so many people coming back saying, I just can't afford that or this treatment or that treatment. And here we have something that we can all do. It's accessible to all. So go for it. So what I would say is whenever you're working on the face, you always want like a little bit of oil, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you've got some uh, makeup on, you might find you've already got a nice little bit of slip on the skin. What you don't want is to be sliding off, but you want enough that you can you can manipulate and, and feel. So we're going to just start a little bit. I'll, I'll do a couple of lymphatic exercises first because I think it's important to, to talk about that before you do anything because if we don't work the lymphatic system, we haven't opened up the drains, so we can't drain anything that we're moving out of the body. So if we start off, you just take uh, your fingers and Vs. You're going to place them front and back of the ear, so literally just here, and you're just going to do little half, very light circles. So this is like a signature move that I'll do in all my sessions because it's easy, 
and you're working kind of where all the key lymph nodes sit sort of from here back and here. So we're just opening up and you're just going to take that down and take the hand and just start to just sweep down the neck. So whenever we do lymphatic drainage, everybody always thinks, oh, I'm not really doing anything or they want to go in really heavy. And actually with lymphatics, you want to be really light on the face because the little vessels at the top, if you press too hard, we're going to close them down. So they're not going to be able to drain. So again, we're just sweeping. So if you think we're kind of activating the lymph, sweeping down the neck, and then we're just going to take our hands and we're just going to massage. We'll just do one side just now because sometimes it's great because you can see the difference straight away. Just in at this little determinus, this little triangle here. So we're starting to open up that side of the face. And are we just working the muscles here or is there... So no, we're just working the lymphatic system before yeah. we even do anything. Because as I said, you want to really start that moving. Then we're going to take our hand and this is when we get into a little bit of massage. So we're going to work down that big muscle. You can see it when you turn your neck here. So taking your hands and your thumb and your fingers, you're just going to massage quite deeply into this muscle. And you might actually start to feel... I'm here, I can feel it being a little bit tense. So what we want to do is we just want to go up and down that muscle massaging. And what we're doing here is we're releasing any stress and tension within the muscle, which is going to allow that free flow into the face. And that's kind of one of the key things that we kind of, if you forget about your neck, then what ends up happening is you're working all the face, but you haven't done anything to the neck and all the stress and tension's here and the gravity is pulling down the muscles in the face. So again, just really quite firm, but just kind of pull it. And you can kind of, if you want as well, take the muscle and you can kind of pull and shake. And this is good for lymphatic, but also feels a little bit odd, but you're just stretching out that muscle. Mm, it feels good though, actually. There's, there's quite a bit of tension in there. Yeah. And if you've got stress and tension in the face, because nobody knows how much they carry until they start to do these exercises, when, you, when you've got a tight or tense muscle, it detracts all the blood flow because the blood flow, think, oh, stress, and it goes into the organs and it doesn't come to the surface. So again, part of all the sessions that I do is about stretching, releasing tension before we even do anything in terms of the muscles in the face. So you're warming up the sides, you've warmed up the lymphatics, you've started to work on this muscle, and we're going to start to work along the jawline. So the first thing that I always do is to break up that sticky fascia. So like I said, the fluid along the jawline is can be the little pockets which kind of gather the little bits that we think are jowls. So taking just the finger, uh, index finger and the thumb, you're just going to pinch and kind of wiggle right along the jawline here. Now, I will get people on immediately saying you shouldn't pull your skin, you're stretching your skin. You're fine. It's different. You're, what you're doing here is you're manipulating. So you're going, it's not about pulling the top okay. layer of skin yeah. you're really feeling to go in underneath so it's okay. not about pulling out okay. it's about really pushing in right i was doing completely opposite and tugging at my skin so that's good <laughs> so yeah it's about going deep because it's not a, what we're trying to do we're not trying to work the skin what we're trying to do is work everything underneath the skin to to make the skin look healthier so as i said pushing and kind of that kneading and then what we're going to do is we are going to then take our thumbs uh, and we'll do this at both sides, even though we've not done the other side, but just so you can see. You're going to take your thumb and you're going to press the thumb just underneath the chin and tilt the head back here. And what we're going to do is we're going to start to move some of that fluid that's coming underneath the jawline, which can become heavy. So the move here is sliding the thumb quite firmly but it shouldn't hurt underneath to the ear and then coming down so we're draining. Down those neck muscles? Down the neck, just down the side of the neck, down okay. the side of the neck here. And you'll see, like, you'll start to go a little bit pinky and red. Do not worry about that. That is exactly what we want and it will die down within five, ten minutes. So here what we're doing is we've broken up the fascia or anything sticky and now we're starting to just sculpt underneath the jaw to move any fluid here. And again, I would do maybe about eight to 10 repetitions. It is coming down. And then the next part that we're going to do is work this little bit. So if you think about it, we're working along the jaw and then we need to work this turkey neck technique. Mm -hmm. 
what everybody calls, like we said, and everybody, I think, and your guest was saying as well, we're spending all our time looking like this. We're always looking down. So we start to gather, etc. Everything falls forward. Gravity pulls down. So we want to really work this muscle. And we've got, obviously, the thyroid muscle down the front of the throat. So we never touch that area. We always want to work around the area. And if you think about it, this is a really difficult muscle to get into because where do you go from, from here? And as you said, when they were doing the till, they were kind of really working at either side and avoiding that part. So this is a brilliant exercise for really starting to work that jaw muscle. The tongue is so important when we do facial massage. The tongue's like your core um, Mm -hmm. of your body when you do it. So the placement's really important as well. So what we're going to do is this is where we put a little bit of resistance in. So this is when whenever we do facial gut, we always put the muscle under tension because that then creates the muscle to kind of, you know, get plumper and, and more juicier. So when we do this, we're going to kind of like slide our hands down the side of the neck. So they sit on the collarbone and you're going to just tilt the head back to here. So you can feel that stretch coming down the front of the neck. Head back as far as feels comfortable. Stick the jaw out and forward. I should say we do not look attractive at any point doing these exercises. but As long as it works, I don't care. <laughs> Stick, push the jaw forward. And then what I want you to do is either pulse the tongue to the roof of the mouth for 10. And then relax. You should feel a real stretch coming down the front and this muscle working. If you don't feel it enough, it's about making more resistance and or tilting the head further back. Yeah, I really, you can really feel it. That is a great one. That really is. If you go far enough back and work that tongue. Think about one simple thing you can do is think about your tongue posture. So most people's tongue lies like flat on their mouth, like at the, at the bottom of the mouth. What you want is your tongue to be sitting, the tip of your tongue behind your front teeth, so at the roof of the mouth. You'll see the difference. So if I just like drop my tongue down here, mm-hmm. And when you put your tongue up, this just raises up. So you just have a much better. You can take that um, to a little bit more advanced move when you're doing this. And you can do kind of, it's like pouting, almost like kissing the sky. So Yeah. Are you still moving your tongue as you're doing that? No, I'm just moving my lips at that point. Okay. Just hold down the pressure. Okay. Tilt the head back. Jaw in a forward position, not back forward. And that feels like it's working the sides of the mouth. So this this is advanced, so it starts to work the jaw. Okay. So again. Perfect. How fantastic. I mean, it looks ridiculous, but you know. Yeah, when my husband edits these videos, he normally picks out a screenshot of my most ridiculous look and shares it with me. And so th- there we are. There's the gift for him. So you do look, I mean, my face is everywhere doing these things. Once you get over that, oh, I know I look ridiculous, but you because you can feel that work straight away. And also with facial, you're, it, because you're, you're flooding that circulation to the face, all that oxygenated blood, so you always get a little bit rosy when you do it too, but... Yeah, something by working here and then kind of the cheek muscles and then your eyes. You're working kind of key, the, the three kind of key main areas. What I would say is it's like consistency with everything. So unfortunately, there's no quick fix. I firmly believe that if you are doing something that's boosting collagen, that's moving, you know, toxins out of the face to deep path, that is, you know, generating that oxygenated blood to the surface. It's getting your lymph flowing. It's getting the collagen. You're plumping the muscles. It's kind of like there's not much to lose in terms of um, you know, this practice. Nothing to lose and everything to gain from trying it out. Do you have anything for my problem spot, which is the the eyes? I need a brow lift, basically, so <laughs> to lift my lids. <laughs> so how do I do that through massage? So there's a few things. So if we think about the frontalis muscle, so the big muscle goes from here and it goes right the way to the top of the head. So we really need to think about working the full uh, big muscle group that's here. But also with eyes, it's really about um, opening up the bicularis, which is the the round muscles um, around the eye. So 
the face has got a bicularis muscle here and here and there's circles. And the best way of describing this is when we are young, it's like a scrunchie that's pulled out to here. OK, so it's nice and tight. When, uh, as we get older, it starts to come in and contract. And that's what causes like the wrinkles around the eyes, the crow's feet, all those kind of things, hooded lids, etc. First and foremost, we can do a nice little easy lift and drain. So if you take um, your finger as a hook, first and foremost, and again, we go lighter pressure under the eye because we have um, much thinner skin, as we know. Mm -hmm. I always find if you use the other hand as a little bit of an anchor, so you're, I'll show you the move first. You're going to take your finger as a hook. You're going to use this hand as an anchor. You're going to sweep under the eye and sweep up to the hairline here. Perfect. Nice and light. So this is us starting with the eye and sweeping up. So what this is doing is moving any kind of fluid we've got under the eye. And then also we're tapping some acupressure points in a minute, which really help uh, get rid of dark circles and kind of tired eyes, etc. Good for the sinuses, I would imagine, as well. Yeah, and this muscle here that's right the side of the nose, this uh, directly impacts um, your nasolabial fold line as well. So anything kind of around this area. So we always lift back and up and we always finish in the hairline. What you also want to then do is you want to take your hand above your eyebrow and just kind of use it as a bit of a lift. Take the hook again. Here you can just do little circles underneath the eyebrow. So you're massaging out any kind of knots, tension, etc. And any fluid and then sweep. Perfect. So you're just working your way along. And again, we won't do full here, but you could be doing six to eight sweeps or massages. And we're trying to avoid pulling and we're more pushing again, are we here? Yeah. So yeah. We're, just, yeah. we're just very lightly holding the eyebrow up so we can work this area. And we're very lightly just massaging. Sometimes it can feel a little bit like prickly along certain parts. That's just where you're holding some tension. And then we'll just do some nice sweeps with under the eyebrow. So sweeping up and down. So you're sweeping from here so the in, inner brow, inner brow, out just to the outer the brow and sweep up. So same move we've done under the eye. Sweep up. And then just to further lift that brow, use this hand and you're just going to come underneath and lift up, working kind of catacrow fingers. Okay. So just coming under here. Lifting up. And then just take that and sweep from the eyebrow up the frontalis muscle. So you're kind of muscle memory pushing back into the hairline here. Am I doing it too hard, do you think, from what you can yeah, see, sort of pushing in a little bit? As I said, you can do it from the eyebrow up. This is quite, because this is quite a, a big muscle group here, um, you can you can go quite firmly and it's quite good for tension release as well. So you can do it that way, but I find it easier just sweeping yeah. up. And if you can see, you've naturally started to see a nice lift in terms of one of the eyebrows. So that my mm -hmm. eyebrow here is sitting higher than that. Yeah. So what we're doing is we're removing any excess fluid that's pulling it down. We're getting rid of any kind of fluid underneath here. We're kind of working through any knots and then we're pushing the frontalis muscle back. The other thing which is great for the forehead, which we forget about, is a scalp stretch. Oh. So you can see straight away my eyebrows are here. You hold the, the hair in between your hands, pull back and up. Not that it should feel uncomfortable, you should feel a stretch and give a sort of shake. Oh, that feels good. The face and our skin, the skin and our face, <laughs> face and our skin, um, doesn't just stop here. You've got to work. So you can do it at the sides. This is great for relieving tension, yeah. for getting everything woken up in terms of the face, releasing any kind of tightness and stretching. And naturally, like everything, it just starts to let that flow into the face. Yeah. So you can see, you can do. So there's loads you can do. You can work a little cheek. Um, you can work like gua sha as well, which is great for kind of um, sculpting and 
you've got so much you can do with your hands. If you want to kind of increase your practice or you want to kind of deepen it a little bit, I should say, uh, a gua sha tool is great, um, more so because um, it's obviously an ancient Chinese massage tool. It's been around for thousands of years. It actually boosts the circulation, they say, by 400%, so the microcirculation. So that's what really gets that bottom layer of goodness up to the surface as well. Plus, if you are into kind of crystal energy, et cetera, it's a real conductor in terms of whatever stone you use. So you can kind of tap into that if you want stuff to cool the skin, if you want um, stuff to kind of work with kind of grounding and same strength. There's loads you can do with that too. But as I said, you've got these and, um, you know, that's a great place to start. And have we covered... Um... The major moves. I mean, I'm just thinking of this, this, the middle section of the face here with the exercises we've um, been practicing there. Would that sort of cover us for the, the midline? I do. I'll show you um, mm -hmm. a couple of moves for cheeks as well. So yeah. um, I have to say this is probably the most unattractive. So I'm glad you picked it, Claire. Let's do it. Get ready for that screenshot from my husband. He's got a choice now. It's like a pick and mix of bad shots. Yeah. So there's loads you can do for um, for the cheeks, but um, I'll show you probably just a couple so you can kind of, uh, and your viewers can kind of get a feel for it as well. So the first thing we want to kind of do is we want to kind of just start to move out any excess fluid. So a lot of time when we do a massage, the reason that you see a more sculpted looking muscle is because we've moved all the puffiness and toxins and fluids out a little bit as well. So we want to kind of show the sculpt through that and then plump the muscle. So again, lots of similar moves in terms of um, hand positions. You're going to take your hands as a little bit of a prayer position, sitting at the top of the head. The thumbs are going to come down and they're going to slide down underneath the cheeks. And you'll see here that I am really like lifting the cheeks here. I'm not just pressing in, I'm coming right down. So we're working our thumbs down either side of the nose yeah. and extending them out into the under the apple of the cheek. Yep, yeah, under the apple of the cheek, as though you're going towards the ears. And then you can bring both hands up to meet at the temple. It gives you a really nice lift as well. So again, easier to show from the side. So you're elongating the muscle at the side of the nose. You're coming right under the cheeks. You've got a key acupressure point here, which is great to activate. So take your time with it. Press in, lift, and you see I kind of finish up at the hairline as well. This gives a lovely, nice kind of lift up as well. But yeah, this muscle is great because this, when this is short, it makes the nasolabial lines um, deeper. Does this help with the nose? Because I've got a, a nose flare. When I yeah. smile, my nose flares out and... Um... Yeah. So you're sculpting down, so you're moving fluids down the side of the nose as well, then working round and then sliding up. So that kind of starts to get things moving and you can see the redness yeah. already starting, right. which is great. And then what we'll do is we will get the muscle plumping. So this is called um, the happy secret. I don't know why, but it, I suppose it's because it looks like you're maybe not gonna, you're, you're keeping something back. This is about putting the muscle under tension. So what we want to do is we want to um, cover our teeth with our lips, a little bit gumsy, and then you want to smile, keep the mouth closed, smile, and you can either pulse the cheeks if you can do that or just hold. So I'll show you first. So. And if you stick oh, your... How do I pulse the cheeks? <laughs> this is what everyone does. I always laugh because I show that when they go, oh, I want to do that one. How do you not do it? You want to focus on, with the smile, you're, you're lifting your cheeks. It takes a little while to, to kind of, to yeah. But what you don't want to do is you'll see you're moving your eyes. So you're going to wrinkle around the eyes. So what you can do to prevent that is hold here. So... Am I working the nose at the same time? On you go. So if you try to kind of relax the eyes and the nose, so it's really the moves coming from the cheeks. It's a difficult one. You get in there. Or you can just hold. You get the same stretch, so.
holding that for 10 seconds, you'll feel it. <laughs> I definitely feel that's going to be the screenshot. Oh, he's going to be like a kid in a candy store after that. Well, I do that. I mean, I have been like, oh, I'm in the car. I'll just practice doing that and with my cheeks. And I think, oh, people will be like, that person's lost the plot. So, <laughs> um, okay, that one needs some practice. But Yeah, you yeah. can just hold and you can kind of put your hands here if you want, or you can put your hands here so you're not wrinkling other parts of the head, of the face, sorry. But um, yeah, you know, if you think about it, we're kind of draining to sculpt, we're kind of plumping up the muscle and then really simply, you can do some nice sort of V sculpting afterwards to lift and push the cheek back. So again, you're lifting and draining too. There's a lot Were you using both hands? That, okay, just like that? And so just one following the other. Okay. So if you do both knuckles facing you, like this, yeah. Okay. One goes up. Oh, I got it. And follows, yeah. And then push up. So again, this is good for getting everything kind of moving and going. Just a moderate pressure there. Moderate pressure here. Fantastic. And you can take that all across the side of the face, really. So again, it's like, you know, when you go and get a face, a facial, they'll do lots of sweeping movements as well. So, you know, there's stuff you can do in between getting treatments and stuff you can do. If you just want to give your skin that lift and that glow, massage is brilliant for that. The, the face yoga exercises, plump the muscle. And then all we would be doing is going back in at the end and just draining down like what we did before down the side okay. of the neck and like always finishing at this area here. This is such a key point. I think we've got about 700 lymph nodes um, from the neck up. And as I said, the majority are all here, here and in the chest. So sweeping that out and getting that out. And when we finish the class, I always get people to sweep towards their armpits and underarms yeah. and actually that ends up um, getting rid so the body gets rid of toxins because after some of the sessions like everything if you've had a massage you'll feel that you need to maybe drink more water go to the loo a little bit more which is what we want so we're getting rid of the toxins in the face etc and the body is failing them. Yeah and do you do online classes do you do virtual classes because I've got viewers from all around the world if they want to sort of spend time yeah. yeah, so I do only one to one. Yeah, I do one to ones. Um, I do events. I do a thing called Face Bar, which is like a pop up face event. I, I go to corporate businesses and wellness events. Uh, I've got courses, um, and I've got like the full kind of kits and explanation behind the kits um, on my website as well. So, as I think the biggest, it's always been the biggest thing for me is I was I'm just so happy I found an alternative way that I find works really well that mm. not only makes me feel good it makes me feel that my skin looks good but also it makes me feel good as well and that just everybody with that overwhelm there's just some really simple things that you can do that doesn't cost anything that you can just practice at home and you can really see the results with as well and I think it just gives people an alternative that we don't always need to go down um in an injectables or an invasive route as well or if you do this is a great thing you can do it in between uh you know getting your uh, treatments etc as well as long as you wait the recommended amount of time between uh, obviously, your your in your Botox or your fillers, etc. As well, yeah, you give it a couple of weeks for you. Exactly. Okay, that is fantastic. Thank you so much. I'm going to link to um, your Instagram page and website in the video description below, so people know where to find you. And um, I really appreciate that. I, I'd love to get you back to do some um, like specifics. Maybe we'll we'll focus on a a certain part. You know, um, so let's just if if people have questions which they always do with each video being published. Would you mind checking in on the comments over a few days and just answering some questions? 100% love to help anybody, any questions. Anything they've got, anything specific areas, more than happy to help. Okay, and they can fire you some questions on Instagram as well. Wonderful, all right, thanks so much, Claire. I really appreciate it. I'm gonna watch this back, learn and, and do this in front of um, watching Selling Sunset or Real Housewives of Beverly Hills or... <laughs> Some of the other stuff I watch. Amazing. Amazing. Thanks so much for having me.
So since our conversation, I've watched Claire's demo back a few times now so that I have some of those movements and exercises recorded in my memory. And I intend to do them frequently alongside my massage roller. And I'd love to hear your experience of facial massage and yoga. Has it helped you? Or if you haven't tried it before, let me know if you now intend to do so. And if you enjoyed this video, then by liking and subscribing, you help the channel to grow and you make sure you don't miss future videos from me like this one. For now, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.